Hey guys, I hit 500 subscribers recently. I am very, very weirded out by that because I never thought anyone would subscribe to this channel, but you have, so thank you all so much and I really appreciate the support and to celebrate I thought I'd do the biggest book haul I've ever done on YouTube, which is pretty big. There are over 40 books and then there's other random things thrown in. I got these books from Waterstones, WH Smith, Charity Shops, The Works, pretty much anywhere I could find them and I've also borrowed some from the library and my teachers so big big book haul so I hope you enjoy it and basically thanks because I really appreciate 500 it's an insane number so so the first three books are ones which I borrowed from my teachers at school one of which is from my old media teacher Mr Charlton and two are from my new media teacher for college Mr Murray so I am very excited to read the two that Mr. Murray sent me because I've already read the one that Mr. Charlton gave. And the one that Mr. Charlton gave was Watership Down and I loved it so much and this is by Richard Adams. I've written my review of this book already so you should check that out on my book blog. I'll leave a link in the description and honestly I'd highly recommend this because it's just awesome. The two books I've borrowed from Mr. Murray, my new media teacher, are these two here. I have Lord of the Flies by William Golding and A Passage to India by E.M. Forster. I've not read these before but I'm seemingly interested in classics at the minute so I picked up these from his library and I have to say I am really looking forward to these. The next lot of books I got when I was out book shopping in charity shops with my friend Rihanna and she was looking for a specific book that she said turned up in every single bookshop when she went in it but there was none in any of the charity shops so yeah I basically bought more than she did which was easy enough for me since I'm addicted to buying books. So the first two are actually linked and I've read one of them already. Um, the first one is Mr. Pip by Lloyd-Jones and Mr. Charlton lent me this a while ago. It was the first one he gave me. He's lent me about six books now and I really enjoyed it and honestly you guys will probably make the link between these two books if you've read the second one that I'm going to show you. And the second book is Great Expectations by Charles Dickens and they link together because the character Mr. Pip is funnily enough from Mr. Dickens' novel and the entire book of Mr. Pip is actually based around Great Expectations because it's their textbook so that's quite cool and it basically this book inspired me to want to read this so I picked them up at the same time in the same shop and I'm really excited to read Great Expectations. The next three books I picked up whilst out book shopping with Rhiannon are actually on a deal. It was 3 for 95 pence and that is really really cheap. The first one I've read before, Mr Murray lent me this, and I really really loved it. It is A Thousand Splendid Sons by Khaled Hosseini. This was incredible. And the other two I have are A Puppy for Christmas, and this is by three authors. We have Carol Mortimer, Nikki Logan, and Myrna Mackenzie. Don't know how you say that last one, it's M-Y-R-N-A, Myrna. And the third book I got was this one, which is Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy by John Le Carr. I've heard loads about this, but I've never found it, so I just thought I'd pick it up since I had the option to. The next book I got from PDSA, and it is the only one that I got from there, and it is Why the Whales Came by Michael Morpurgo. I'm absolutely in love with his books at the minute. I've read more since I met him than I did before I met him. By met him, I mean Michael Morpurgo. And I am honestly in love. So when I saw this, I was like, gimme, 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 a man after midnight. And the final two books I got on this trip were these two. I have a Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens and Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. The next batch of books I got from the library and I pretty much borrowed these to read on holiday but I never did because my dad's one of those people that's like get out there, do things every single day, every single hour of the day. So the first five are actually mangas so I thought I would get onto these but I didn't because we were too busy, too busy to read. And oop, they're upside down, hang on, there we go. The first one I got is the first volume of Oran High School Host Club. I've never read this before, so if you guys have, please let me know what you think of it, because I'm not really sure what to think. My friend's obsessed with it, so I thought I'd give it a go, but I'm not sure if it's my sort of thing. But then again, Ottoman, I wasn't sure about that, and I friggin' love it, so if you guys think this is good, do let me know, because I have no idea. The second one and third one are both in the same series. I have Siren 1 and 2, and these are by Toshiaki Iwashiro. And that was by, oops, I forgot to say who it was by. This one's by Bisco Hattori. The fourth one, am I on the fourth one? Can I count? Yes, I can. A star in maths. I am blessed with not being able to count. Um, the fourth one I have is the second volume of Vampire Night by Matsuri Hino. I love Vampire Night and I'm just rereading it and I just love it. So 
yeah, got this. And the final one is the first volume of Bakuman. And this is by Tsugumi Oba and Takeshi Obata. And I am looking forward to reading this so much because Jesse from Jesse the Reader said he loved it. And a bit of a bookworm finally remembered her username, thank God. She said that this is a 14 part series and it sounds really, really good. And she highly recommends it. So I would also highly recommend it, even though I haven't read it yet. So yeah. Definitely I'm gonna read this soon and probably I'll pick up the rest of the series at some point as well The final book I picked up from the library isn't funnily enough a manga It is actually an autobiography and I picked up the autobiography of Alan Sugar What you see is what you get and I'm an avid fan of The Apprentice and my mum and I watch it together and It's hilarious every time let's face it because there's some people that are just so confident in themselves that get knocked down several pegs throughout the series and then they end up getting fired for being too full of themselves and it's just so funny. The next books are the ones which I bought on holiday and my hair is really annoying. I washed it last night and when I sleep on it it usually goes fine but my fringe is as fluffy as a kitten and it's really annoying. But anyway I bought these books whilst in Devon and I've read one of them but the rest I haven't read yet and I'm really excited to read them because they look so good. The first one is the one that I've read and it is The Puppy Diaries Living with a Dog Named Scout and this is by Jill Abramson and she's some big editor woman in the New York Times, she's like a big editor person and this is just basically a memoir about the first year of their relationship and how Scout developed and all that stuff and it was just really nice. It reminded me a lot of when I was looking after Casper for that first year. He was mental, he's still mental but I can finally walk him without his harness on, he's finally paying attention enough. Unless he sees a cat, rabbit, fox or anything else, then he just won't listen to you whatsoever. The next book I bought is Where'd You Go Bernadette? And this is by Maria, ah, Maria Semple. And I wanted to get this firstly because it was on offer, because it was the Warstones book choice of the month or something. And second because Andrew from Heavy Shelves did that hilarious video with his girlfriend. And honestly, Amber looked fabulous <laughs> in her Bernadette dress up, so... I was really interested to see what the book was about since he decided to make a video all about it dressing his girlfriend up. Third book is the second book, that doesn't make sense, the third book in this part of the haul is the second book in the Cemetery of Forgotten Books by Carlos Ruiz Afon, and it is The Angel's Game. This is the sequel to The Shadow of the Wind which I loved and I'm really excited to read this even though it's huge. These are all huge. I don't know how Carlos Ruiz Afon does it but they're massive. So I'm really excited to read this because I really enjoyed the first book and I would highly recommend the series. If you haven't read it, god damn it, read it because you will love it. Love it. Then I have The Road by Cormac McCarthy and this is my compulsory reading along with The Great Gatsby and Loot by Joe Orton, I think it is. I have to read all of these for English literature in college and that's all I know. Okay, I'm probably going to read this as soon as I finish The Arrivals by Melissa Ma, which I'm not particularly enjoying at the minute, hence why I've gone really slowly and played Animal Crossing far too much. The next book I bought is Catch Up Clouds by Annabelle Pitcher. I've read My Sister Lives on the Mantelpiece before and I didn't particularly like it, but Ben from the Norwich Waterstones in Norwich recommended this to me. Waterstones have a gorgeous edition all to themselves with this nice pattern, so I thought Okay, let's try it, let's try it. And this won an award, which award did it win? Winner of the Waterstones Children's Book Prize. So that sounds really good. The next book is my first ever David Williams book, and I, f I am filming and missing the TV show that I was supposed to be watching, Big School, right now. I will kill everyone! And it is Gangster Granny. I've not read any of these children's books before, but I thought I would pick one up, because I felt like I should. And last book I bought on holiday was... Dun dun dun! The Cuckoo's Calling by Robert Galbraith, aka J.K. Rowling. I made an entire separate video about this and I'm just going to shimmy to the side. You can watch it here because I have now learnt how to embed videos and do annotations, so go ahead and watch that. I made it with my friend Kate, shimmy back. She's lovely and they were initially intended for her channel, that's why she might be talking more than me. But since they were literary, I just thought, you can have these two, I'll have these two. And that's basically how it worked. So this is the secret novel which JK Rowling published under Robert Galbraith in April. So I'm hoping I'm going to enjoy it. Everyone says it's really good, including everybody on the back, but they wouldn't put a bad review on there really, would they? The next books I won, and you've seen eight of them, but I just felt I should include them because I hold them. 
I did my book unboxing and you can watch that there but that's not going to stay there long um, I did win a copy of The School of Good and Evil by Soman Shinani I am going to be giving this away at 750 subscribers because I loved it so get me there and you could possibly win this book which I would recommend highly but don't go out and buy a copy until you know you haven't won this one got it? good, okay um, whoa, I just fell over because I butted my bookcase, bad bookcase, getting in the way of my butt. But anyway, um, ah, you've seen all these before. It's the Skullduggery Pleasant series by Derek Landy. Love it so much. Going on order, I'll just say the order because you guys know these already. We have Skullduggery Pleasant, Playing with Fire, The Faceless Ones, Dark Days, Mortal Coil, Deathbringer, Kingdom of the Wicked, and then the novella, The Maleficent Seven. So, if you guys haven't read this series before, you definitely should, but I'm giving away this entire thing, apart from the Maleficent 7 that's taken by my friend, I'm sorry. I'm giving all of these away when I hit a thousand subscribers, and I just talked way too fast, so let's slow it down, get mellow. That was way too fast, but anyway, yeah, I'm giving away books 1 to 7 when I reach a thousand subscribers, so if you could get me there as well, that would be pretty, pretty weird, but you could possibly win, whoa, stay up there. You could possibly win this entire series, and I would highly recommend it, so yeah, looking forward to doing that. Oh, and before I move on, by the way, you know I won the School for Good and Evil? I actually won a badge with it, which is awesome. I don't know if you guys can see this very well. It's here, the purple one, and it says, I'm an ever. Because apparently, according to the survey, I'm not an evil person, which is obviously good. And you guys have never seen my nerdy bag before, so just briefly, we'll have an interim of nerdiness. Mario, there. I have my Sherlock Holmes keyring from the museum, my Pokemon toys, my Skullduggery Pleasant badge, my Sherlock badge, and my Mockingjay pin. The next book I got when I was heading back to Devon to pick up my sister and her husband, it is Gone Girl, and this is by Gillian Flynn. This has been all over, over the past few weeks, and I'm not really sure why, but I'm gonna find out, and it is the addictive number one bestseller. That just makes it sound a lot like Fifty Shades of Grey, so I hope it isn't like Fifty Shades of Grey. But I think it's a mystery slash crime novel, so hopefully it shouldn't have quite the content of Fifty Shades of Grey. And this is the book that everybody is talking about, so I hope that it is worthy of the Richard and Judy book club, cl ah, book club selection title thing. So, there was a situation a week ago, just over a week ago, where eight copies of the new Skullduggery Pleasant book, Last Stand of Dead Men, were shipped to Forbidden Planet in London, and basically what happened was Forbidden Planet sold them, and it was, at the time, nearly three to four weeks earlier than the release date, and what I thought was that they were going in every single Forbidden Planet all over, so I was like, <gasps> must go to Forbidden Planet. So I went all the way into Leeds to Forbidden Planet only to find nothing, because it was just one mistake in a warehouse in London, and I was gutted. But whilst I was there, I bought another book, and a DVD, and a CD. So, the book that I bought was actually a manga, and it is a bind-up of One Piece. I have volumes 4, 5, and 6, and this is by Ichiro Oda, and I love One Piece so much. And the thing I find funny about these books, these bind-ups, is that they're so floppy. They literally just flop all over the place. But I'm really excited to read these volumes because I haven't read them before and it's one of my favourite series even though I've only read three volumes. It's just so funny and honestly I just love Monkey D. Luffy. I love Luffy so much. So I'm really looking forward to reading this. The DVD I got was because I got the CD and it was only 2 99 after that. The CD I bought was Run Re ah, One Republic's Native. I love it so much. I didn't think I'd like the entire album, but I can't stop listening to it. And then the DVD I got because it was only 2 99 after buying that is this. Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. Everyone said that this wasn't a good film, but I didn't actually see it, so I have no idea whether it was good or not. And I'm going to check it out. And hopefully it won't be as bad as everyone made it out to be. But if it was, do feel free to let me know. But I'm off to see The Sea of Monsters on Monday with my friends, so I thought I'd better watch this first to see if there are any things I should know before watching the second film. I've read the first three books, by the way, I'm not just watching the films. I would never do that. <laughs> Next, we're returning to charity shops, because they're the best places to find things ever. I picked up, as I may have said earlier, that might have been in my last take of this video, my own copy of Watership Down by Richard Adams, because I loved it so much that I wanted my own copy. 
And at the same time, I was really surprised, but I love this. At the same time, whilst in the shop, I actually found the DVD, the animated one. So I bought that as well. And I've been wanting to watch this for several days now, but I just can't drag myself to the DVD player because I know it gets stuck and I don't really want to put my DVD in there in case it gets jammed and broken. But I am definitely going to watch this and cry, cry my eyes out. It looks so cute. Then I finally found this. I was looking in bookshops like proper ones like Waterstones and WH Smith. Couldn't find it anywhere. I was heartbroken, but I finally got this. My own copy of The Shadow of the Wind, which goes before that book that's in that dangerously high pile all the way down there that I can't get, The Angel's Game. And I just wanted my own copy because, again, I loved it so much. I didn't even realise that my camera had cut out until I was just editing and it just suddenly went and there was nothing there. So after that, I went on to say that I bought this, which is Sharon Osbourne's autobiography because my friend Rhiannon, you'll remember I mentioned her when I was doing my other part haul, and she basically wanted this book. And since I saw it, I was like, oh, well, I should probably buy this in case she still needs it, and she didn't. So now I've got this and I don't want it so I'm gonna get rid of it immediately I'm not gonna read it because frankly I uh, don't really particularly like Sharon Osbourne so yeah that's a bit awkward and then the final thing I got from the charity shop is the coolest little toy you will ever see it's this tiny TARDIS and it's just so adorable this is Matt Smith's TARDIS and I haven't got a replica of this yet so this is my first sort of figure of it and it's just awesome but the funny thing is if I peeled off that little round sticker there, it would literally just be the David Tennant TARDIS again. So, yeah, that's literally the basic difference between Matt Smith's TARDIS and David Tennant's TARDIS. 10 and 11, separated by a round sticker. Awesome. And then the final three books I got are here. And these are three ARCs slash review copies from HarperCollins. I had to pick these up because they went to the mail centre. And Mum sent me in on my own and that was scary as heck. But I have two books by David Levithan, who wrote Will Grayson, Will Grayson with John Green, who I love. So hopefully this will be, well, these will be really good books. I have Are We There Yet and Boy Meets Boy. These are both really short, and I'm pretty sure these might be reprintings, but I'm not sure. So I hope I'll enjoy these. They look really good. And then the final book I have is this one, which is April in Pike's Earthbound. Don't really know much about this, but I pretty much claim every single book when they send me their um, blogger request things saying, do you want these books? I'm like, yeah, just give me them all. So yeah, they are the three review copies which I've got to read, and that is it. That is the mega book haul. It is past midnight and my door is open, so that's kind of scary. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in my next video, which is actually going to be a bit different. It's not going to be strictly book related it's more of a college related video because i'm gonna do a college supply haul thing so maybe if you guys are starting college and you haven't done your shopping yet i'm just gonna basically tell you what i've got what i'd recommend and just basic tips for keeping yourself organized there's a giant moth right there that is disgusting bye guys